Good morning guys and welcome to Blue Rock Adventures. I'm Chris. But today I have a project I need to do. I need some rod storage. I need a rod rack for my garage and also I need a rod rack for my pickup truck, for the bed of my pickup truck specifically. So I've been thinking about how to do this and I've looked on YouTube and online for some ideas on a DIY PVC type project and I couldn't find exactly what I was looking for because I, I don't want to make two racks I want one that can do both I want one that can sit against the wall in my garage and not take up too much space and I want another one that can go back in the back of my pickup truck and I can have you know an angle so that uh, the rods won't get uh, up into the trees or anything that I might pass by in my truck so I'm going to show you what I'm doing now and why I need a rack so bad Here's how I'm storing my rods at home right now. I'm just using my boat, which is not ideal. Now I'll show you how I carry the rods when I'm on the way to the launch ramp. As you can see, you know, the, I've got a uh, rubber mat in the back of the truck and so far nothing gets damaged, but you know, they jump around in there and it's just, just not how I want to take care of my nice fishing rods and reels. I want them to last a long time. I want to take care of them. So I really want a better solution than this and I think I've come up with it. So I want to share that with you today. So let's go back in the shop. Let's cut some PVC pipe and let's build us an adjustable PVC fishing rod holder. Thanks for joining me. Okay, here I am in the shop. So this project is going to be really easy. There's just a few uh, components that are needed. I've got 10 uh, PVC one and a half inch tees. I've got a can of transparent glue and I've got four 90s and I've got one stick of pipe here, cut it in half at the hardware store just to make it easier for me to get home in the truck. But you know what, it's going to be a super simple, easy project. I think the only other thing I need is uh, one drill bit and one screw. All right, so what I did initially is I took some measurements in the back of my truck, right, because the garage uh, doesn't really matter so much. So. I measured the width of my truck bed and where I could fit in the rod holder. So I figured that I had 56 inches kind of on center with the sides there. So about 58 inches total width that I wanted to use in the bed of the truck. Uh, if you and mine is an F-250, you know, full size truck. So if you have a, a different size truck, you might want to measure these, uh, make these measurements yourself and determine the exact width you need. Also, I had to determine based on my fishing gear, which is mostly spinning reels, uh, how far on center I needed to have each rod holder, right? So that they're not banging into each other and I've got room to set them in, get them out and all that without scuffing them up or damaging anything. And I determined with my setups, my reels and my rods that I needed nine inches on center for each rod holder. So that's how I did my basic layout here. I just did a quick and simple uh, few marks on my work table here to show me where everything should be. And it actually worked out just perfect for me. Uh, I wanted six rod holder for the truck and an eight rod holder for the garage, which I'm gonna get out of this project. So some of these measurements will depend on your specific circumstances. If you're using bait casters or conventional reels, you know, you might be able to get away with six inches on center and be able to have a few more rod holders if that's what you need. Or you can build the overall rod holder as wide as you want, right? Um, in my case, I want a dual purpose rod holder, one that I can use here in the garage and then just transfer the whole thing into the truck and then back to the garage when I'm done because I'm only out fishing once or twice a week so I don't want something that stays in my truck all the time and my rods go with me. So I don't need the rod holder in the garage when I'm not here. So it should work out perfect. I don't need to build two rod holders. Take up the space and the expense. Uh, all this stuff, just so you know, that I bought 
it was around forty dollars. I mean, PVC has gone way up in price. Uh, this is a price in Baja, Mexico, where you live could be vastly different. I don't know, but this whole project is going to be around forty dollars, and then plus a little a can of rattle can of spray paint if you want to do that. Okay, I just did a quick uh, test fit to make sure that I got my spacing right, and it turned out that I needed to make a cut a piece of pipe seven inches long in order to get nine inches on center for my rod holders, which these will be right here. Measure twice, cut once. That's what you want to do. Okay, I've cut all my spacers for in between each rod holder. I've got kind of everything laid out on the table here. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the pieces that support the base. And I'm also going to cut the rod holders. Everything here is going to be 12 inches. I think I need about 10 of them. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I've got just about all my pieces cut. Uh, I'm just lacking the one cross member I'm going to put in here to kind of stiffen the whole assembly. I'm going to wait until I get everything glued up uh, for the rod holders and then make sure I've got everything the way I want it and then I'll measure this final long piece that'll kind of bring the whole thing together, stiffen it up quite a bit and make it a lot more secure, especially in the truck. Okay, so I'm gonna glue two rod holders together now and try to make sure I get it pushed in all the way and that I get the, there we go. And that I get the angle right, right? I want them all facing the same direction. There we go. By pushing down on the bench on both of them, then I get them lined up properly. Transparent glue is setting up so quickly that I decided to put one loosely fit one of these rod holders in here so that I can get these aligned quick because it was just setting up so quick it was making them hard to twist and get it just the way I wanted it. Okay, so now I've got my main beam with all my rod holders on it and they look pretty good. Not perfect, but good enough, okay? Okay, now I'm going to work on gluing up the side supports for our fishing rod holder here. So I've got my T on, which is going to kind of hold the whole rod rack together. And now I'm going to put a 90 on the end here, and I want it facing the same direction as the T. Okay. Got that. Okay, so these are going to be laying on the ground like this, right? And this piece is going to go pointing up like this. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Like this. Okay, that's how we're going to want to do them. So you want to make sure that you get the other 90 in the proper position. As you can see now, we have two opposite but matching pieces here, okay? These are going to be our side supports for the rod rack. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sanding on the top edges of my rod holder tubes here, just to knock off that sharp edge on the PVC. I'm just going to do a little Sanding on the inside, 
doesn't catch my raw butt. And then I'm going to do a little sanding on the outside as well. Okay, I, I got the top uh, sanded on both edges so that just, you know, not take away that sharp edge off of the end of each rod holder. Now I'm going to do the most important part of this whole thing is I'm going to I'm going to sand a little on the inside of the 90 that faces the same way as the T here. So I'm just going to give that a little sand. I want to knock that down a little bit because this is the joint that I want movable. Right? I want to be able to adjust position so that it will work in the garage and in my pickup. So I want to give a little bit of tolerance to this when I fit the other piece in so that this can move. So I'm just going to do a little sanding like that. And each one of those, remember it's the one that faces the same way as the T, okay? And I'm just going to give that a, a decent sand. I'm using 150, you could use 180 or 120, I don't think it really matters too much. I just want to knock that down a little bit just to allow a little more tolerance. And we're also going to do that on each end of our main rack here. Each end, we're going to take this outside edge down a little on that also so that when it fits into this 90 here, it will have some room to be movable, right? That's the whole key to making this work for both, uh, both places I want to use it, the truck and the garage. Okay, I just finished sanding the end here of the rod holder assembly and so that it fits, you know, fairly loosely into the end so that I can move it. It took actually a fair bit of sanding. It's a pretty tight fit, uh, you know, the factory pipe into the factory fitting. So I did a little bit of sanding inside the 90 and I did quite a bit of sanding on the outside of the pipe so that I can get the kind of fit that I want is still snug, but I can move it around, okay? Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit the rod holder assembly into these two end pieces that I made. So I'm just going to fit them dry and push them in pretty tight. On both ends, like I said they're movable so we don't have to worry too much about that we're going to get a nice handle to move it with the rod holder okay so now that i've got a nice fit there i can measure for my main cross brace here which is going to be glued in okay so i'm going to take that measurement now So for me, I've got 54 inches. Remember to measure and figure the extra pipe that goes inside the T-fitting into your calculation. And I'm right at 54 inches, so I'm going to cut myself a piece 54 inches long. Okay, I've got my 54 inch piece, uh, one and a half inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe cut. It's going to go here. It's really going to hold this whole assembly together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue in one side first and then I'm going to pull off the far end here and then I'm going to glue it in. But I'm only gluing it into the 54 inch piece. Remember we're leaving this dry so that it can move and we can adjust the angle of it. Okay? Okay, I've got my assembly uh, glued together now, just this one cross piece. I actually had a little trouble with the glue. It didn't set quite the way I wanted, nice and flat like I wanted it. So I ended up cutting it and put in a little coupling here in the middle. Uh, you know, I haven't used this uh, transparent PVC glue before, but I wouldn't recommend it. It sets up so quickly, you really don't have time to make fine adjustments. I would probably go with the gray uh, glue that takes, it gives you like 20 minutes to kind of move it around. It takes a little longer to set, but it gives you time to kind of adjust everything. I'll never use this stuff again. Uh, but now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start putting some of the rod holders 
into the T section. Okay? And now I can show you how we have an adjustable angle on our rod so that it'll work in the garage, right? And you want it fairly straight up and down and you can set it against the wall. But as you'll see when we get into the pickup truck, I'm going to want to actually move the stand like this and then the rods would be too much at 90 degrees. So then we can just adjust the rod holder up a little bit. We're going to put a little set screw in here with two positions on it so that it'll stay where we want. Done deal. One rod holder, two uses. The garage and the truck. Okay, there's six of the rod holders there. But that's not all we're going to get. We're going to get an extra two rod holders, which is going to end up being the support at the bottom of the truck bed also. So we'll have eight rod holders in the garage. We'll have six when we use it in the truck. So I'm going to glue those in now. Okay, and that's all the gluing we've got to do for right now. Actually, I think that's it for the whole project. So now you can get a better look at how it's going to sit in the garage here, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll show you some better angles on it. But you can see how you can probably lean them slightly inward in order to keep a little bit of the weight. Uh, you don't want it to fall backwards, but I'm probably going to end up setting it against the wall something like this and then everything will be nice and close to the wall and you, I've got these extra two rod holders at each end as you can see so I can hold eight rods actually here then when I move it to the truck I'm going to tilt it like this and I'm going to angle the rods up like this here and then I'm going to secure up to the back of the truck which I'll show you shortly Okay, here we are back at the truck, and I've got it uh, installed in the back. And you can kind of see how it's set up here. So all I did was I put a set screw on each side with two positions, and I marked the positions, one for the garage and one for the pickup. Another set screw on this side here. And that just keeps everything in its place. And now you can see it leaning against the garage wall here. Not taking up too much room. Giving me plenty of space. And I've even got an extra two rod holders. All in all, I'm real happy with the way this project came out. I just really needed the rod storage, to be honest. You know, I've, I had it all in my boat, and every time I climbed in my boat, I had rods to move or risk stepping on them. Now I don't have that. You know, I have the, I have the rods uh, safely against the wall of the garage where they're not going to get in the way or get, you know, knocked over and the guides messed up. And then when I move them to the truck, they got a great place to sit in there. They're not going to bang around when we go over potholes or when we're launching. They'll all stay right where I put them uh, to keep my investment in rods and reels uh, in good shape, which is what we all want, right? So I hope you enjoyed this DIY uh, tutorial on how to make a, a rod rack that can work both in the garage and in your pickup truck. And I, I hope if you enjoyed it, you'll give the video a like to let me know and consider subscribing to our channel where we'll be doing more DIY stuff. We've got our Ponga build videos and our adventure videos, fishing videos, trip videos, a lot of stuff out there. We're, we're trying to bring you some, some nice entertainment. Okay, so have a great day and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.